Okay, so this is going to be a video about using similarity ratios, uh, area ratios, perimeter ratios, which is we're not really going to do problems with, uh, and volume ratios. Um, so the first thing is uh, take a look at these two pages, 554 and 647 for these theorems. A similarity ratio of two similar figures is AB. Then the perimeter ratio is also AB, but the area ratio is A squared B squared. And then if we look at page 647, all that's repeated except for now we learn that the volume ratio is A cubed B cubed. Uh, now to do any of these problems, you kind of have to think of it in two steps or it'll make you a little crazy. Um, the first step is you mess with your AB, AB squared, a squared, B squared, A cubed, B cubed, however you need to, to get your applicable ratio, the ratio that relates to your particular problem. So think of it in two steps. You're doing this AB to AB squared thing. The second step, you get your applicable, applicable, applicable ratio, and then you make a proportion just like you have always known to do. Okay, so that's uh, the central concept. The first problem we're going to do is pretty straightforward. Um, it says that there's a similar similarity ratio uh, refers to the ratio of the lengths in any two figures. So lengths could be things like radiuses or heights or side lengths like here, but it's always length, uh, not area or perimeter, uh, not area or um, or volume. Okay, so. Here we have a similarity ratio of 1 to 3. It's 2 to 6 reduces to 1 to 3. And um, they just want you to understand that when you're looking at these two pentagons, that you can derive the similarity ratio from the lengths alone. Here's another problem. It's a pretty easy problem. It says, given the ratio of the areas of these two figures, find the similarity ratio. Remember, the similarity ratio is the ratio of the lengths. So we go in two steps. Um, it's area, so we use the a squared over b squared is the 100 over 400. So it's the area ratio, which is the a squared b squared, over the actual ratio of the areas, which is 100 over 400. And then we square root both sides to get the similarity ratio, which is A over B on this side, and square root of 100, which is 10, square root of 400, which is 20, which reduces to 1 over 2. So the similarity ratio as the answer to this problem is 1 to 2. The next level problem, we're given a small pentagon and a larger pentagon. The side length on the small one is 4 centimeters. The side length on the large one is 10 centimeters. They tell us that the area of the smaller one is 27.5 centimeters squared. Figure out the area for the bigger one. Okay, so again, it's really important that we think of this in steps. The first thing we're going to do is find the similarity ratio, which is the AB thing. So it's 4 to 10, which is the length, which reduces to 2 to 5 and is usually written as a fraction 2 over 5. Step 2, we need the applicable ratio to our problem. We're trying to get area, so we need the area ratio. Area ratio is the applicable ratio, so that's always step 2. So we, we do 2 squared, four, 2 squared, 5 squared, which is 4 over 25. That's our applicable ratio. Step 3, we just set up a, a proportion using our applicable ratio. 4 over 25 is 27.5 over x, which we were told 27.5 is the smaller one. Small over large, small over large. So then x gets to be 171.875. Um, so it's really important that you understand that first we had to mess around to get the ratio that applied to our problem. Our problem is an area problem, so we had to mess around to get an area ratio, which is our applicable ratio, which is this 4 over 25. That's our applicable ratio. Once we have that, we just do a proportion. 
I know I'm being repetitive here, but I promise this will make your life easier. Note again in that last problem that there are two clear and different steps. You use your similarity ratio to find the area ratio. That was your applicable ratio. The area ratio was your applicable ratio. Why? Because it was an, they're asking you to find one area given another area. Um, so you need the area ratio. Okay. Um, all right, we're now moving on to page 646 where we're talking about volume ratios. There's a little bit of a prelim. Sometimes you're told that two figures are similar, which is awesome. Now half of your job is done. But sometimes they'll even then ask you to find the similarity ratio, or other times they'll ask you, are they similar? And if they are, what's the similarity ratio? So there are a couple of things that you need to know. All cubes are similar to other cubes. All spheres are similar to other spheres. For the other figures, you have to check that the corresponding linear dimensions are proportional, and I mean all of them. So if there's a length of two, a width of three, a height of four, you have to check that the length, width, and height are proportional to the second figure. All three have to be proportional. Remember that radiuses are lengths, heights are lengths, and side lengths are lengths. So let's do the easy problem. The easy problem is always to find the similarity ratio. So find the similarity ratio of two cubes, which are, as we know, two cubes are, are always similar to each other, with volumes of 729 cubic centimeters and 1,331 1, cubic centimeters. So we just say a cubed b cubed, because it's a cubic uh, volume uh, ratio, and the volumes were given. Then we cube root both sides to get the similarity ratio, because similarity ratio is always a over b, right? So the cube root of a cubed is a, the cube root of b cubed is b, the cube root of 729 is 9, and the cube root of 1331 is 11. Now, if you need to know how to find the cube root of something like 729, you enter it into your calculator, the little caret, parentheses, 1, slash, 3, parentheses. So you basically raise it to a power of 1 third, and that will give you the cubed root. So we get a over b is 9 over 11, so we now have solved the problem. The similarity ratio is 9 to 11. Now comes a problem that gave me some trouble. Um, so I'm going to walk through it slowly. I want you to take a look at it in the book. It's on page 647, example 3. It's paint can problem. Um, I'd like you to go through this a few times on the video, then try it yourself. Maybe then see the video again one more time, then try it yourself. Okay, because this is this is a tricky problem. So they, they tell you that the lateral area, so again we're in area now, of two similar paint cans, so we're given that they're similar, are 10, 19 centimeters squared and 4, 25 centimeters squared. We're also told that the volume of the small can is 1157 cubic centimeters and we're told to find the volume of the larger can. Okay, so let's stop for a second. We're given that a squared over b squared is 1019 over 425. So step one, we're going to go to the similarity ratio. Ultimately, our applicable ratio is going to be the volume ratio, a cubed, b cubed, right? But it's easier to go from a squared to a up to a cubed, right? So we're going to, it's a three step process to get to our applicable ratio. So a squared over b squared is 10, 19 over 425. Then a over b, and what they do in the problem is they don't solve the square root. They just say square root of 1019 over square root of 425. If you had gotten, say, 2 over 3 here, you'd be more comfortable because square root of 1019 over square root of 425 is a really odd similarity ratio but it is our similarity ratio. But keep in mind, it's not our applicable ratio. Our applicable ratio is the volume ratio, which is a cubed b cubed, because we're looking for missing volume. OK, so we went from the lateral area to the similarity ratio, but we need, oh, sorry, there's a um, missing cubed here. 
what we need is the volume ratio, which is a cubed b cubed. And all we have to do for that is to go from the similarity ratio to cubing both sides. So a becomes a cubed, b becomes b cubed, and we cube these square roots. And now we have our applicable ratio. Yay! All we have to do is use that in a proportion with the one volume we've been given to find the one volume we don't know. Pretty straightforward. Uh, there's some math that's a little tricky, though. So before we get into the tricky math, we're just going to, here's our applicable ratio, right? We figured that that's the applicable ratio. And here's our proportion. We, we're, we were given this volume. We don't know what this volume is, and we just set up a, a proportion. We know how to do that. Now it's just a matter of math, but it turns out that once you have a, a square root cubed, you probably haven't ever done that before. So I'm going to mention a couple of things. One is that um, exponents come before multiplication, so we're going to have to mess with this square root cubed first. You remember that square root of 2 over square root of 3 is the same as square root of 2 over 3. So this mess over here simplifies to this, right? And because exponents come first, what we're going to do is we're going to square root this uh, quotient, 101, 1019 over 425, square root it, and then raise it to the power of 3. Then we've done our exponents, and then we're going to multiply it by 1157, and we get our answer of 4275. But there's a shortcut. If you have to first square root and then cube something, you can raise it to a power of 3 over 2 and get the same result. So you just do 1019 divided by 425, in parentheses, of course, raised to the power of parentheses 3 over 2. Why is that? Because square root is an exponent of 1 half. Cubed is an exponent of 3 over 1. When you multiply those, you get 3 over 2. So if you raise this to a power of 3 over 2, you're going to get the same exact answer. OK, one last problem, one last problem. Example 4, page 648. A marble paperweight shaped like a pyramid weighs 0.15 pounds. How much does a similar shaped marble paperweight weigh if each dimension, by which they mean each linear dimension, is three times as large? OK, the trick is they're asking about weight. And it's important to know that weight is proportional to volume. Therefore, we can use the volume ratio as our applicable ratio. So step one is the whole AB thing is we find our similarity ratio is 1 to 3. Why? Because the bigger one is, in all linear dimensions, three times the size of the smaller one. So that's a ratio of 1 to 3. Now we need to find our applicable ratio, which is the volume ratio. So we just take that 1 to 3 and we make it 1 cubed 3 cubed, which is 1 to 27. That's our volume ratio. It's also our applicable ratio. We just take this 127, which is our volume or applicable ratio, and we make a proportion, which is 0.15 pounds over something we don't know how much the other one's going to weigh. Do the algebra, and we get 4.05 pounds. OK, I would watch this video a few times, try the problems a few times. Um, you have to get used to the idea of messing with the AB stuff until you get the applicable ratio to your problem. Once you get that into your um, concept, it'll be easier. Thanks.